Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Market Update Show, where I update you guys on QQQ Spy, as well as the big six tech stocks, NVIDIA, Tesla, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. And today we had another bullish day, and we'll see, is this the bounce um, that's going to potentially retest the all-time highs? Sorry, not the all-time highs, but the 52-week highs, or is this just going to be a shallow retracement where we potentially get more downside? All right, so before I look at the charts, let's take a quick look at the AI symptom data that we got today. So yes, um, we got this yesterday and it's released today. And it looks like the whole market is still quite bullish at 42.9%. That is still a very high read um, overall. So we'll see um, going to next week if that's going to continue or not. Usually it doesn't continue that long. We, we did have a slight dip for three days, so that's normal. And we'll see if that consolidation in the charts is going to be healthy or not. And Jerome has been testifying for the past two days, and he's been talking about saying he wants to raise two rate hikes, but the market is just not buying it. And you can see it's still a one hike on July 26th, and the rest of the year is still a hold. That's what the market is pricing in right now. So the market doesn't think that he's going to do two hikes, but we'll see when it actually happens, right? That will take us into September 20th because um, July is a for sure hike. And then we'll have to see if he does hike the second one in September or not. If he does, then market needs to reprice in that um, hike. So we'll see. Fear and greed index is 79 yesterday. Today is 80. So it just ticked up a little bit due to market being green. All right. So we'll take a look at QQQ first, then SPY, and the rest of the tech stocks. So right now, QQQ um had a nice bounce today and thanks to apple i've been talking about apple just um super healthy on his chart zero red flags uh, for apple and it's in a perfectly daily uptrend so it's helping hold up qqq so let's take a look right now so is this the last three days retracement is still healthy absolutely because we haven't even touched the 23.6 this just means the um the a this move to this B move, to the top of this move, has only retraced not even 26% of that move. So when it comes to, to 0 0.5, it just means that it has retraced half of this move. So that's what the Fibonacci is, and essentially it just um, interest ratio. All right. So if we don't even retrace back to 38.2%, it means it's still a daily bull flag. So that is. Um, a good sign for the bulls, meaning we have only retraced very shallowly and now we have a bounce. So now for the bulls, they want to see this bounce obviously go test this all time high level, which is um, 372.8. Um, the bears obviously want to see this form a higher low pivot, meaning this low is going to be higher than this low. So, how do we uh, know if that's going to set a higher low or it's going to test the all time highs? So, we got to zoom into the time frame. So let's go into the hourly, right? So right now the hourly has negated the downtrend. So we're talking about this downtrend, hourly downtrend yesterday continuing. So we did break a low of, of yesterday, but lacking zero fault from the bears. Right when the market opened, uh, it was all bulls. You can see all the buying right when that market opened. So right now on the next drop, the, uh, the bulls are likely going to be buying that dip to form an hourly uptrend. Right now it's in a neutral trend because we just negated the downtrend and this is only one move. So we need to see a dip where it goes below, setting a higher low for that uptrend. Actually, this is set it right, already right here. So that's the hourly uptrend right there because this candle closed below the prior candle. Um, went below it and came back. So that is an hourly uptrend back to the bulls. So that is setting um, that probably of this being the higher low, meaning this low is higher than the prior pivot low, is set. So now, bulls' next um, objective, what they want is obviously to break this sideways range right there, this head and shoulders um, looking pattern right there, back above that um, 267.221 range right here, the sideways cluster resistance. And if we do break that, we're heading to all-time highs to test again to this 52 week high. We'll be testing that if we do break this. And for the bears, you want to see us 
um, obviously reject from that level and break this prior pivot where it was um, for the hourly uptrend to go from an hourly uptrend back to a neutral trend. See how that happens tomorrow. For now, this could also form an equilibrium where it just means it tightens up and goes into next week. So we'll see if that happens or not. So that's the three probabilities uh, scenarios that could happen. So now, it's the most likely scenario is we're probably going to head um, to test this level, break it, and head higher because that's what the hourly uptrend is telling us. But if we zoom out to the bigger picture on the daily, we are still overall um, a little bit extended. So we'll see potentially it can shape up that equilibrium just going sideways to consolidate over time and to let the bulls take a rest. That could be a likely scenario as well. Once you get a little bit more price action, then we'll know if that's the case. But as of now, bull spot the dip, bounce exactly right off that 12 EME, tail looking line, exponential moving average indicator at uh, 12, if you just want to type that in here. And you can see we have been bouncing off of it many times over the past couple of weeks, and we bounce exactly off of that. So, of that one day, and if we do come back and break below that, then that's a red flag. But uh, as of now, no signs of that because hourly trend is our, gonna be our guide. All right, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Same thing, uh, similar to QQQ. We broke that far head and shoulders, um, bearish in the pre-market. So we got a little bit of a gap down, but uh, absolutely zero follow through from the bears right when the market opened. Same thing with QQQ, bull just spot the dip right when the bell rings. And see, we came back to it. So essentially, that is um, air break lacking follow through and bulls about the dip. So, seems like there is not a lot of bears in the market still. And we'll see if the bulls continue to buy back up to the key does go back up. Spy is likely going to go back up as well. So, that's why I look at QQ the most because of its weightings. Uh, XLK and SPY is quite a big waiting. And if we do continue for QQQ, I am looking back up at this level for SPY at the most recent level right here where that um, head and shoulders resistance was. But we rejected twice, like over here and over here. So right here and right here. So that would be the next resistance for bulls to try to take over. And the hourly trend is also our guide. This is a mini hourly uptrend now as well on SPY. So tomorrow, if we do gap up, let's say we open up here, then potentially we might get some selling. But if we do just open flat, likely potentially go up, retest if we do reject, come back down, or slightly come back down, retest, break. We'll see um, what tomorrow brings us. But for now, hourly trend uptrend is going to be our guide. And I've been talking about this for the past um, three days where, well, more than three days, but like the market overall trend is bullish on the monthly, weekly, and daily time frame. So even we had a three slight red days, um, market still very healthy. So just keep that in mind. Um, the overall trend is still very strong, intact. But um, as of now, there is no Huge red flags yet, just small cracks, and that's about it. But nothing, um, nothing in the market to be uh, too worried about at the moment. Even in a bull market, um, these kind of pullbacks are very normal. Just like three day kind of slight pullbacks are very very normal. All right, taking so another video. The video actually relatively weaker than QQ today. You can see QQ was up at least one point three percent. 1.2%. And um, NVIDIA was down 0.05%. So this means it's relatively weaker um, for now. We broke that uh, rising wedge yesterday. Um, and we retested it, came back out of it. Today we retested again, and we couldn't get over it. So maybe I'll retest it again tomorrow, but um, it's starting to be a little bit weaker. So if QQQ continues and NVIDIA doesn't, then this could potentially be a temporary top. I'm not saying that months down the line that we, we're not gonna break this high anymore. You know, next thing you know, NVIDIA has, gives us another um, really good earnings report next quarter, right? This could make new highs. 
But as of now, this could be a temporary um, all-time highs level due to um, being a little bit overbought on every time frame, on the, especially the longer time frames. You see, it has been running quite a bit. So let's see here if it's forming another rising mini rising wedge here. Because so far, it's feeling like we're making a higher high, no follow through as well. Where is that? You can say this is like another rising wedge if we delete this one. Because this is just starting to see it makes a new high, lacking follow through. And this can make a new high, lacking follow through. Make a new high, lacking follow through. Just like the last one where um, the psychology of it was buyers want to buy and buyers are like, oh, too expensive up here. So no one buys anymore. Buys again. Too expensive up here. No one buys one anymore. Too expensive up here again. No one's buying it anymore because it's just you know how, how especially when you break above the prior high, that's when you're supposed to get follow through from the bulls, but you don't. That's what the rising wedge is a bearish pattern. You can see it just breaks by a tiny bit and it just kind of rejects over. It. Everybody sells into it. But that's starting to shape out a little bit like here again too. See, it goes up higher. Nobody wants to buy. It goes up higher. Nobody wants to buy. So maybe it'll shape out like that into. Um, tomorrow. So we'll see. If not, then this 420 support is the key support for bulls. You guys, how many times you bounce off of it here? Bottom wick, bottom wick, out, bottom wick, bottom wick, five times, right? So bulls has been bouncing around this 420 range support. So if that breaks, we want to get a convincing break with one coming in with a big handle through it. And that is a convincing bear break. For bulls, obviously, you want to come back this rising wedge and potentially test the top of this rising wedge again to see if we get over it or not. Step is to at least get over this 4, 433, 434 range where we have rejected a couple times as well to here, came back to, into it as well here and here as well. So that is my nine for NVIDIA. I'm going to delete this. It's, easy. it's too comp. It's too hard to see when there's too many lines. But yeah. Tesla, um, that head and shoulders, interesting, kind of played out on the four hour. And we actually bounce above the right shoulder. So I was talking about it yesterday where we had such a big drop already that potentially this uh, morning, we're gonna form that four hour head and shoulders, which means come down here and then form that right shoulder. So if we do get a red day tomorrow, then it would be a pretty um, good looking head and shoulders. But as of now, it's, um, it's a decent bounce. You can see we bounced, let's say here, we have bounced over 50% of the drop. So that's a good sign for the bulls. And that means the most likely scenario on the next pullback will give us a higher low. So because we have bounced over 50% of this move, obviously no guarantees because um, it just increases the probability of ascending higher low when we break that 50%. It was only to like right here, 0 0.382 or, or to that left shoulder area and we don't break that 0.5, then the most likely scenario is that we will retrace back down and potentially set that um, lower high. But uh, so we did bounce over 50% and we'll see if bulls can continue carrying. Um, that's tomorrow. So we zoom into hourly and see if we can see anything here. So hourly trend is back to the bulls. You see this hourly uptrend back to the bulls. And we had an hourly downtrend come from right here for the bears and no follow through. So now the bears took, bulls took over and now it's back to the hourly uptrend. So the very first thing bears want to see is in rejection pretty much right here because we don't want to get it back above this um, shoulders range. So initial rejection right there would be exactly what the bears want to see. And obviously break this 525, uh, 552, I mean, uh, because this is the neckline for that head and shoulders break. If that breaks, then that head and shoulders on the four hours is confirmed a bearish pattern. And for the bulls, we want to continue back up. There's not a lot of resistance in this area. It's just straight up and down. So we should be able to get back up to this level to test um, this 275 level, if the QQQ 
does have a green day tomorrow. SFQ has a red day, um, might be a headwind for Tesla. Let's see on the daily, yep, there's not a lot of resistance, especially in this zone that we're currently in. You can see just a gap with nothing. A little bit of volume trade here, a little bit of volume trade here. Very thin volume trade here as well. So we should be able to get back up here if the bears, um, bulls, the bear bulls, uh, continue their buying and QQ being green tomorrow. All right, let's see here. Team, yeah. All right, Apple. Apple, I've been t this is the stock that um, doesn't need a lot of breakdown because for the past three weeks, maybe even months, I've just been saying this thing is just going straight up in an uptrend that's perfectly intact. You see, pull back, pull back, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down. The uptrend is just perfect every time it bounces off. So as long as it holds that 12 EMA uh, on the two day time frame, zero red flags for the Apple. And it's just pretty much holding QQQ up. And we made it close at an all time high today again. Um, this is the first time we closed this high. Even we did reach that high um, last week, roughly by like a couple cents. But today we actually closed in that high. So now, uh, zero red flags for Apple. And it will continue to stay like that if it just continues that um, uptrend intact. Apple is in an uptrend in a monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, everything you can name of, um, five minutes, 15 minutes, everything is in an uptrend intact. So uh, don't short this thing until it starts to form some kind of a downtrend. But as of now, zero signs of that. And if we do break all-time highs, obviously we're just going to go to all-time highs and we'll just do, we'll just do its... Um, Price discovery mode, where you just try to find a new support of resistance for itself. Amazon broke out of this chop zone cluster. Talked about this yesterday. Where if we do break above this right here, this one two seven zone of resistance, we're likely going to test the uh, high of here. And if we do break that, then we're probably going to go higher. So which is what happened. So it broke both two resistance and shot straight up to the high of this zone, you can see right here. The zone is roughly around there. You can see this wicks, rejected from there, rejected from there, rejected from there. So right now it's testing this little cluster of volume here and we'll see if it get over. And 130 is also a psychological level. We did close above it slightly, but um, we'll see if it continues tomorrow. If it does, not a lot of volume trade in this area, we're likely going to pretty easily go higher in my opinion because there's not much distance above us now all right let me see here google um the weakest of them but we formed a daily downtrend and it's starting to lack follow-through even though this balance is big it's still in a downtrend because we didn't break apart the prior pivot but this balance is big enough now that potentially it could shape up a um higher low. So we'll see if um, Google can take back its range up here. But it's still the very first step for bulls is to break this prior pivot right here, that 126.11 high. And the bears want to obviously get back below that 121. Again, we're back in this sideways chop zone now again. So same battle, same side, resistant support. And Microsoft. So talking about Microsoft, we're after this three-day drop. The next bounce, they could potentially shape up a chance for that um, lower high being set. So we'll see if it actually sets um, tomorrow or not. Is this retracement so far is close to 0 0.382. That can still be a daily bear flag. And if we do negate that, then I want to see a bigger bounce on the uh, Microsoft going higher than 0 0.5%, uh, 50% over there to negate that daily bear flag to potentially shape up into a higher high. So we'll see if they can do that. So tomorrow is quite key for a lot of this tech stocks and structures to see which way they're going to go. Um, yeah, so I got for you guys. And if you just subscribe, you guys made it this far. And I will update you guys tomorrow as well as um, have a good rest of you guys a week.